One of the most helpful windows into the creeds that was open to me was in a book by the late Orthodox Archbishop Anthony Bloom, a book called God and Man. He tells a story about a seminary classroom where a learned and respected bishop of the church has come as a visiting lecturer. The subject of the lecture is the development of the creeds. The scholarly bishop gives a deep and rich lecture. At the end of the talk, he asks if anyone has any questions. One student, a person who's living in that tension we all know between an ancient faith and the modern world, raises her hand. And the bishop calls on her, and this is the question that she asks him. What do you do if you find you simply can't say some of the things in the creed? Well, the bishop says, I know it can be hard, but I found that if you use the printed version of the creed to help you as you say it, you'll be able to say it soon enough. Well, the student is a little embarrassed. She doesn't really feel as though her question has been heard. And so she tries again. I apologize. She says, I think, I think maybe I was a little confusing. What I mean is, what do you do if you find that there are some parts of the creed that are difficult for you to say? Well, now, by this point, everyone in the room can see from the bishop's face that he isn't really grasping the question that he's being asked. Well, he says, it can take time to fully bring these words into our hearts, but if you keep at it, you'll be able to do it. Finally, the student's exasperation overcomes her embarrassment, and she blurts out bluntly what she had been trying to ask politely. No, no, she says. What I mean is, what if there are parts of the creed that you simply don't believe? Well, suddenly the bishop understands that he has been missing the question. And this is how he responds to her. I'm very sorry I didn't understand what I was being asked. But I think perhaps you misunderstand what the creed is. It's not your creed. It's the creed of the church. It's what the church believes. We say it because we're working on becoming fully a part of the church. In our Lenten walk through the baptismal covenant, we've arrived today at the moment when we begin to make positive affirmations of what we believe. Up to this point, we've been clearing away the obstacles to being a disciple. But today, we turn a corner. We start aligning ourselves to what the church believes. And that's where it starts to get uncomfortable. But it's also where our faith gets its first chance to change our lives. The author Jane Shaw has written that in the years of the earliest Christian churches, when people came forward to be baptized, they were not asked, what do you believe? Instead, they were asked, how has your faith changed your life? What difference has this made to you and in you? Today, we're talking about the three most fundamental affirmations of the Christian creed, that we believe in God, that we believe God came to live among us in the person of Jesus Christ, and that we believe God remains present with the church as the Holy Spirit, the source of holy counsel and comfort. Now, when we say those things, we are affirming that this is the faith of the church. And we're affirming that in our desire to be part of God's people and members of God's church, we take those articles of faith as our own. But if we say that, and we have to be prepared to show how that belief has changed our life. And what does that look like in our day? At its most simple, and so its most subversive, when we say these things, we're claiming that there is a reality other than our own, a presence greater than our own, a truth beyond our understanding. And to say those things is to take a position radically opposed to our consumerist, and scientific culture. It doesn't mean we don't celebrate human ingenuity or welcome scientific discovery. Of course we do. But it does mean we believe there is a reality that will always be beyond our comprehension because it is a pure sort of holiness that we can only proximally understand. And it means we believe something else as well. 
We believe that this other reality breaks into our own and sanctifies this existence by its presence. To say it differently, we believe that there is the possibility of the sacred in this life of ours. Even people who don't think they believe in God can find themselves stopped by this reality, and it can become either the beginning of their exploration or the source of deep frustration. We who believe these things have lives that are changed by them. Living in the awareness of a reality beyond our own means that we live with a kind of humility about our own limitations. We don't expect perfection of ourselves or anyone else. But we also know that we and everyone else have been brought into being by that larger, purer truth and are made to be in relationship with it and so with each other. So, we know that we're called to treat other people as though they possess a dignity equal to our own. Not an easy thing sometimes, but it's an attitude that has the power to change the world. There's one other way our lives are changed by this. Because we believe the Holy Spirit enters our lives in these moments of sacred possibility, we live in a state of constant alert to be looking out for these moments. Sometimes we create ways to invite the Holy Spirit formally into our lives. Our life as the community of the church is really about constructing a framework in time and space to be intentional about inviting the Holy Spirit to sanctify our lives. But sometimes, oh, sometimes, the Holy Spirit doesn't need the church to get our attention, at least not if we're paying attention. Sometimes God's presence in our world just breaks through our routine and our boredom and grabs us right by the heart. And if we dare to risk it, those moments will change our lives even more, make us more alert, more aware, more open to the work God's love wants to do on us and through us. The creed is the creed of the church. You can think of it as a challenge. You can think of it as an invitation from the centuries of faithful people who have come before us to share with us the truths that they discovered about God. And all we have to do is accept that invitation and say the two riskiest and most daring words any of us can say. I believe. Amen.